Hi guys, good to see you again, welcome back to the channel. Well, can't thank you enough for the amount of images that you've sent in over the last few days since the video from Friday night about a critique session. I'm going to have to make two if not three videos about that many images and it's been difficult to trawl through them and try and find a nice sort of equal set, some that need cropping, some that need a bit of shadows taken out, some that don't need hardly anything doing to them at all. But so there's going to be two if not three videos I think, so thanks ever so much for sending them in. And again, we're all different at editing. This is only going to be my take on it. You guys might do things different and please do comment in, in, the, in the section below, in the comments below and let me know if you do something different and we'll try and get some sort of conversation going, you know. But um, yeah, this is only how I would do it under a bit of pressure, different scenarios, you know, pitch side, quick edit, quick bit of saturation or whatever. So this is how I would do it. So without further ado, I've got a load of images loaded up on the laptop. Let's dive in and have a look. Right, so this first image that I've chosen, something really different, a bit of BMXing, and a uh, great image sent in by Adball. I'm sure that's not your real name, but that's all I've got. So yeah, thanks for sending it in. Now, with regards to this one, it's, it's pin sharp. I'm not sure if you want to capture the image absolutely pin sharp perfect. I might just have slowed my shutter speed down a bit to get a bit of movement in the spokes. Um, and sort of try and bit more of a pan blur if you like something like I don't know two fiftieth one sixtieth something like that go down as low as you can um, and it would have also just blurred off your background a bit and made the the rider stand out even more and been pin sharp but that aside it's a great image the only thing that I was always taught I mean I used to do a lot of motorsport photography. Uh, or or athletics or any 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 sort of sport where there's a you, your objects moving, which is ninety percent of the time when you're capturing action, is to give your your subject room to move into. So as you can see with this image, we've got more more of the frame to the rear of the rider than the front. So I want that rider to be travelling into some space, if that makes sense. A um, bit like if you've got a, if you've got an ath athlete, I always crop so that the athlete's got space to run into, if you know what I mean. So with this one, let's just go for a, a bit of a crop. Let's just take them off. I'm just going to go for a standard three and a half by four and a half inch crop, which is what I would do if I was sending off to the agency. So let's go 3.5 by 4.5 and just turn that around. So we've got that sort of crop now. So I'm just going to take that in a bit something like that let's move the image down a bit right we're going to run out of space there so let's i do like the shadow as well which is nice so let's give the rider all that space in front of him to ride into let's just have a look at that so i've got a little bit more space here than here now and that's that's about right you know there's not a lot i might just go into the uh, camera raw and just take out a bit of the shadows let's have a look just bring him out a bit perhaps you know so again another another method with this would have been when you've got when you're shooting into the sun pop your flash on just to just to lighten up your, your subject area but using the using the shadow slider on this it works fine um, I don't really think it needs much saturation let's give it a little bit look and I think that's about it I mean I do like playing with the old clarity tool just to give it just to give the image a bit of power, you know, a bit of a bit of oomph, but um, we don't need to do much with that. I reckon that's about right. I say the image is lovely and sharp. Let's just okay that. And I think I'm, I, I like. To, obviously, he's going over this ramp here, over the over the jump. So nice to leave that in, a good proportion of that in. Leave the shadow in, and uh, yeah, I reckon that's about right now. So that's what I would do with that one quickly. But when you've got a moving object, always try and crop your image so that it's moving into a bit of space. It gives you a sense of, of speed then. That's what I was always told anyway, it does seem to work. So that's that one, what else have we got? Let's not, we'll not want to save that one, so we'll go off that one. All ah, right, this is by Adball again, just, just a quick one this one. I'm presuming that this is a bit of a story. Action wise, 
there's not a lot of fast action going on. I'm presuming this was some sort of, he might have got a red card, a yellow card. Looks like he's he's barged him out of the way. The ball's still, and it looks like he's, he's taking it right in the midriff. So I'm guessing there's a story to this. If there wasn't, if I was shooting this match and I'd got this frame and nothing occurred, nothing happened to this, it was just a rough tackle, referee never stopped the game or anything, then there's not really a story to go to it and I probably would have ignored this image. But I'm guessing you've sent me this because there was a bit of a story to it. You'll have to let me know. And um, the only thing I would do with this would be probably crop it in a portrait. So I'd probably, I'd probably crop it nice and tight. There's not a lot going on around them. You've got good depth of field. You know, everything else is blurred. So I'd probably just, something like that, just crop it even a bit tighter perhaps. Just give it a really nice tight crop. Um, just looking at this, I'm, I'm setting that on my horizons. It's about there. That's about right, I think, really. Um, not a lot else. It's pin sharp, really good focus in the balls, nice and sharp. I'm guessing this was at 2.8, 3.2. You know, you've got a lovely drop off, everything else is blurred. You've got this player running in the background, but he's nice and soft, so he doesn't really draw your eye away. But yeah, I'm, I'm guessing there's a story to go with this. This is why you've sent it in. But uh, yeah, that's what I'd do, just to crop, basically, really. Right, let's get rid of that one. We don't want to save that one. Ah, right, so this is Mark Wilson. I think, it, is it Mark? No, no, hang on. Let's go, this is Kane. This is Kane Mannix. So let's go, so, right then, so this is Kane's raw file, he sent me raws and the edits. So basically straight away you can see horizons off, so the horizon needs needs cropping, uh, needs altering, and then I would go tight on the player himself on a portrait, and I think, looking at Kane's next image, that's exactly what he's done. So pretty spot on really. Um, again, lighting wise, might, might just take a little bit of shadow out, not a lot, let's have a look. Not a lot of shadow, just a little bit really. Highlights, bring the highlights up a bit, but it's pretty perfect as it is really. So we'll just okay that. So that's that's Kane's edit. As you can see, he's cropped in a bit. Gone portrait, lost, lost all this space around here. It's not needed, nothing's going on. He's obviously just about to pass the ball. And uh, yeah, nice crop that Kane. So that's that one. Let's have a look. Let's get rid of that one and that one. Another one that Kane sent in. Now, the reason I've chose this Kane, I'm guessing at the angle you're stood up, but correct me if I'm wrong. At football and most events, we'll try and get as low as we can so that we're, f we're shooting upwards to the action. Makes the action so much more powerful than if you're at their sort of eye level. So I reckon, it looks like you stood up here, Kane, but correct me if I'm wrong, that's why I've chosen this one. And this is your edit, let's have a look, is that four? So that you've cropped in a little bit and you've took some of the, the, the highlights off, which is great. I'd have props cropped in a bit more. I'd have gone even tighter, I reckon, Kane, but let's have a look. So I, I like that water, water coming off the pitch. Shh, th th this player is not really doing much, so I'd probably have cropped in a bit more and gone really tight. And had you been sat down, that would have been a really, a really, you know, even more powerful of an image. But let's just have a look at the exposure. Um, let's have a look at the old graph there. So highlights wise, let's just take the highlights down a bit perhaps. Take them down a bit more and the exposure down a bit perhaps. Just a little bit, not a lot. But had you been lower, I think that would have been an even more powerful shot. But... Um, as you can see, she's just about to strike the ball, so that's good, but action-wise, brilliant. Yeah, great, and uh, again, uh, what are you at here? Uh, F4 on this one. So, uh, nice drop off on the background, so yeah. That's all I'd do, Kane, just crop in a bit tighter, perhaps. You don't really need this player in, but like I say, it's each to our own. But yeah, if you're not, sat if you're not tried sitting down, have a go at it. Make, them, make your, your subject even more powerful and, and larger in, in the viewfinder. But anyway, let's go off that one. So that's that one. Kane did send in loads, actually. So let's just go off that one. Uh, that's Karen's. We'll come back to Karen in a minute. Oh yeah, just one last one of Kane's. He's cropped this really well. So uh, as you can see, we all have a lot of space that we need to crop out. Um, so that's that's the raw image. And then that's Kane's image. Just cropped in nicely. Um, yeah, I think I'll probably leave this player in. 
leave that player in there. You could have cropped a bit tighter, but not really, because you haven't got much to play with here, and it's pretty tight here. But again, centre of the image, good bit of action. You can tell he's being tackled. Uh, I don't know if you've got a frame before or a frame after Kane, where you could see the tackle, the tackler's uh, the face, but obviously he's hidden behind here, but it uh, looks like he's, <laughs> he's been uh, whacked from behind a bit, and he's just looks like he's just about to drop the ball I'm not sure but uh, yeah not not much wrong with that one at all might probably back into the old camera or for, take the exposure down a bit perhaps I don't know a little bit take the highlights down give it a bit of saturation but you know just give it a bit of color but doesn't need much at all so yeah pretty spot on that cane so thanks for sending them in mate anyway right let's get rid of them too and that one right uh, this is Karen Rodhams not sure if this is full frame or if you've cropped right in on this one Karen what I'd say was I'd, I'd probably like to see her being lifted up it's obviously a line out I'm guessing good that you've she's looking turning to get the ball but probably a bit too much of a tight crop I'm not sure let me know what you think guys but um, yeah I'd probably like to see if this is full frame then there's nothing you can do about it if you've cropped it in quite a lot then probably leave the other player that's lifting her up leave her in as well um, quite often, if I'm umming and ahhing about shall I crop it tight, shall I not, I leave it for the editors to do. You know, leave it. Send the more you send to the papers or send to your agency, the more choice they've got to work on that image. If they want to crop it in and crop it nice and tight because there, there's a story there to this image, then let them do it. But on the whole, I would try not to crop in too much and let the editors do it. But uh, yeah, anyway, let me know what what uh, what if this is full frame or if you've cropped in, Karen. But but yeah, that's what I'd say about that one. Probably a bit too much of a tight crop, but everything else is great. Ball's nice and sharp. Uh, again, this image from Karen, pretty perfect, really. Not a lot wrong with it at all. You can tell she's. It's great. I always used to say, if you can take an image, and hand it to a person in the street and say, right, tell me what's going on. If they can tell you exactly what's going on. Then you're laughing and you look at this one you know she's just been tackled she's just been brought down there's other players approaching encroaching on it she's still got the ball not sure if she's far from the try line or whatever but uh yeah this loads of action in this one it's pretty perfect this one karen looks like you sat down as well so you've got a really good angle on this a nice low angle but uh yeah not a lot wrong with that one karen at all i just thought i'd get leave that one in uh we've got another one from karen oh yeah this one this one black and white you never see black and white sports images now. Not since we, we're, we can all, you know, all print in colour, all the papers print in colour. Unless you were asked to do a black and white one for a bit of mood, I would always, always go colour. I mean, it's, it's so vibrant, you know, the, these players are all in red and white and whatever. And I do see some sports photographers send stuff in black and white, but you never see them get used. So, and it's just a shame to lose the colour all the vibrancy, and also I think you can see um, more of a drop off with, with uh, you know, a, good, a better depth of field with, if you leave it in colour. Whereas black and white all tends to merge into one. So yeah, I'd, unless it was specifically asked in black and white, I'd always keep, keep your sports images colour. But uh, anyway, thanks for them, Karen. Right, who we got next? Mark Wilson. Again, angle wise, I think Mark, I think you stood up here. And again, if you'd have been sat down, correct me if I'm wrong, you'll have to let me know, but if you'd have been sat down, then this action would have been in this dark area and would have really stood out. You'd got a lovely drop off. But I think because you stood up, you've got that background in in the main area of the image, if you like. Um, you know, I mean, if if you could have cropped in a bit and then, you know, if, if that there, was up there, it'd have been a great shot. You'd have had a nice black backdrop and just the player's head in the ball. And also, you might have had a little bit more, I think it would have been, so if you're lower down, I think that light would have been on, on the subject. But um, yeah, so that's all I'd say with that one. Try and sit down if you can. Uh, as you've seen in my videos, I've got a Minimax stool. They're brilliant, get them off eBay. Oh, there's a link in the description, I think, in all my videos for the Minimax stool. Get yourself sat down, get yourself nice and low, and then you can lose a lot of the messy backdrop, like these cars, you know, or fencing or whatever. You can lose them. Like when, when we're in big stadiums, 
you can guarantee that you've just got all the fans in the background if you sat down as opposed to all the 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 um, marketing boards and that you know but uh, yeah good good frame good action great action just about to head it or just headed it but try and get a low angle so that's that one mark what else we got this one not a lot wrong with it really just just needs a crop probably just a bit of a tighter crop look something like that i would say action wise it's great you can see she's just about to come in for a tackle um not sure what you're shooting on there let's have a quick look see if it'll tell us i don't know if it'll tell us or not uh yeah f13 there mark try and your iso thousand so if you'd have gone to f4 f i don't know what lens you're on uh you're at 210 mil there f13 you're going to get everything sharp um best case scenario best method is to go down on your aperture so that you blur everything out in the background and just your sub subjects nice and sharp so yeah and also at f13 obviously really bright day you can see it's a bright day um, and you're at 12 50th which is about right perhaps try going up to 16 well you could have done you could have gone a bit faster on your shutter speed if you'd brought your aperture down and then your isos would have come down as well so yeah, try and shoot at sort of f4, 5, I'm not sure what the lens is, 5.6, 2.8 if you can, just to get a lovely drop off and make your subject stand out. But yeah, that's the only thing I'd, I'd say about that one. So that's that one, Mark. Is there one more? No, that's it. Let's not save that one. Right, on to Matt Austin. Um, this is his raw, I think this is the image that he edited. I think he sent me the edited and the raw image. Both very similar. Um, I know there's a lot of dejection in the with the lads in the background but i would crop right in on that i might leave that dejected player in and then his teammate um let's have a look at that probably go a bit more actually probably just lose a bit of his arm there and probably lose a bit of his teammate really we don't want to go above the knee if we can help it unless you want to go really tight but i want to try and probably leave these two guys in in the background probably just slot it that way a bit and then the other thing as well, the horizons look. So we just need to bring that round to get the horizon right. We've still got this, we've still got dejection there. We've still got uh, celebration there. And he's running in now. The only other gripe that I had earlier, let's just take that down a bit, is the fact that, as I said before with the, the, the BMXer, get your subject running into space. Now, a little bit trickier here, Let's just go above the knee a bit. Let's just lose lose the knee a bit and keep his, his teammate in and get him more central. That's probably as much as we can go. There's still a little bit less space here than here, but I don't want to lose this player's face or this player's de dejection. Uh, so we'll probably leave it at that. Colour-wise, I'm not sure if the colour's a little bit off. Let's just have a look. Let's give it a bit of warmth. Looks like you're under some tricky floodlights there as well, which doesn't help. But let's just take it yellow and then just, you know, see if we can get that white. I'm presuming it's a white T-shirt, but let's give it a bit of clarity. Give it a bit of bit of oomph, a bit of dehaze perhaps. There we are, look. Trying to get his shirt white by adding, adding a bit of blue into it, but difficult. You must have been under some difficult floodlights there, I'm thinking, Mark, but uh, Matt, but I'm not sure about playing with that tint, whether that would alter it much. Probably not. Turning it a bit green now, isn't it? But yeah, that's only a quick that's only a quick edit. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, I'd need to spend a little bit longer on it, but I wonder if we can do anything with the exposure. Highlights, take the highlights down a bit. Bit of contrast perhaps. This contrast is a good slider tool actually just to give you give your image a bit of power. Still quite a bit of highlights on his face look, but let's have a look at that's only a real fast edit, but but that's not that's about there. It's mainly the crop with this one anyway. But uh, yeah, so that's that one Matt. Thank you very much mate. We'll get rid of that one. Ah right, so we've got Paul O'Brien's now. Great shot, great. He must have known you were sat there, Paul, I'm thinking, but the only thing that strikes me instantly, and it's something that I see a lot of, and it's my main gripe, is horizons. But I'm, I think, Paul, you sent me the, the raw image here for me to edit, so I'm sure you probably corrected the horizon. So straight away, let's just tell you what I'm going to do. I've lost the bottom of my, lost the bottom of my Photoshop. Let's just move that down a bit. 
There we are, that's better. So straight away, I'm gonna correct that horizon just by dragging the box around. I'm not gonna do a crop yet. I'm gonna, we can work with the crop after. Let's go with, I'm going on the pitch level, so let's go something like that, I think. Let's have a look at that a little bit more. Got some houses in the background as well, that's too much. About there probably, something like that. Let's go with that. And then now all I'm gonna do is try and just centralize him a bit. So we've got plenty to play with here, good frame this, Paul. <coughs> something like that, that's about right. <laughs> it's a great celebration that. Matey doing his socks up look. <laughs> it's a good dejection picture when players are doing their socks up. So let's just go back into the raw filter. Take the shadows out a bit, I think. Let's try and take the shadows out. Take the highlights down, his face is just shining a bit, but it looks like you were under tricky conditions as well. Just try and do that. Let's have a look, let's give it a bit of saturation, make them oranges even brighter. Temperature, I'm just putting a bit of blue into this image now to try and bring it out a bit. Let's take the exposure down a bit, because it looks like you're under floodlights. But that's about it, I think. Bit of clarity, perhaps give it a bit of oomph, look. I mean, if you go, one, another tip I always got told was, with your sliders, always go way past, and then bring it back a bit. So if I go way past on the clarity, woo, way too much, bring it back down a bit, bring it back a bit, and you can get something like about that, I'd say. Bit of dehaze, perhaps. Bring him out even more. You can go on forever with these, bit of shadows look, and that's about right, I'm quite happy with that. Yeah, great frame that one. So just the horizons really and a quick bit of editing. But uh, yeah, hope that's all right for you, Paul. Other than that, brilliant. Tell him to run at you more often. <laughs> great shot, that. Right, let's go off that one. Who we got next? All oh, right, we've got um, JP Sanchez. Let's take the crop tool off. Not a lot wrong with these really, to be fair, mate. Let's just take that there. Um, yeah, pretty perfect panning, really. Let's just see what settings you're at for everyone to have a look at. Right, F11, yeah, good pan, ISO 100, and you're at hundredth of a second. Pretty spot on that, really. That's, that's a, I think I've said with panning in the past, always get your aperture right up, gives you so much more chance of capturing a nice pan blur. Um, what you're at, you're at F11, yeah, and say with panning it's perfect look at the wheels absolutely spot on there lovely and sharp the car next to him is obviously a bit blurred might have been moving at an overtake so the other car's going even faster than the car that you're panning on that's why that car's a bit blurred perhaps but yeah spot on that yeah iso 100 great settings 285 mil hundredth of a second yeah there's not a lot wrong with that the only thing i don't know if you've cropped this jp if you have I might have left a little bit a little bit of room at the front for the car to travel into, like I was on about earlier with the with the BMXer. But yeah, lovely pan blur that, so spot on that one. So let's go off that one. I think JP sent a few in. Oh yeah, this one, really interesting. I'm not sure if he's thrown his gloves away, if he's if it's dejection, if it's cheering. But I'm guessing the fact that you've sent me that, there's a story to this. Um, so you've got to get what you've got to get. And if you're shooting through the crowd or whatever to get that image, then this is spot on really. I might have gone for a tight crop. Um, let's just have a look. Let's go back out of that. Let's go out one. I might have cropped in a little bit perhaps just to get rid of a bit more of that shadow of the, the interference, you know. And then let's just go in on that. I might, Use the old clarity tool, give it a bit of vibrance perhaps, just bring it out a bit, a bit of dehaze, and then whack the old clarity up, just to really bring him out a bit, a bit of texture perhaps as well. Uh, let's have a look at the shadows. No, shadows are okay, don't really need anything with that. Highlights, they're okay. Contrast, just to bring him out a bit, a bit of exposure, something like that. So you can see his eyes, perfect, you've got the eyes, you've got a, a bit of action going on, not sure what he was doing, but but um, looks like he might have been throwing his gloves into the into the fans light, but yeah, just a bit of a tighter crop perhaps, that's all, that's all mate, but yeah, spot on with that one, let's get rid of that one, and then there's one, oh yeah, this one, um, unless something happened here, I probably wouldn't do much with this image because the subject's 
A, going away from me, what I've always been told and I've always learned with football players or with any players, backs don't really sell, if you know what I mean. Um, so, unless something specifically happened here, I'd, I'd probably probably leave this one out or try and get the riders coming towards you. But uh, other than that, yeah, not sure about this one. Let me know what you think and, and why you sent me this one. Jobs are good and Right, so that's that one, thanks JP. Let's have a look at the next one, who we got next? Ah, right, so Jonathan, hi, thanks for sending this one in, Jonathan. Pretty perfect, really. The only thing I would do would, again, be a crop. Let's just zoom it out one. So yeah, I'd just crop it in nice and tight on the portrait. And again, give the player room to kick the ball into. That room thing again, so a bit more space here. Um, Let's just have a look at the horizons. I think props it just needs, you can't really go on much, but I'm only going on them, but it's about right. Anyway, I think really probably this fence here, like I'd go on that, which is about right now. So we just crop into that, bring it in one. Might take a few shadows out, perhaps. Let's have a look. A few shadows out. Uh, what you want, you want F8. F8 there, try and bring the aperture down to, well, if you've got a 2.8, obviously that's the best scenario. If you're on F4, try and bring it down to F4. That'll also bring your ISOs down, of course, because you're at F8 at 200 mil. So yeah, if you'd have been at a lower aperture, like F4, F5.6, you'd have had even more drop off and these, these spectators, these fans would have been even softer, which would obviously bring your subject out even more, bring your player out and make it nice and sharp. But. But um, yeah, depending on what lens you've got, keep your aperture down as much as you can. Um, you're at 2,000th, so that's brilliant. Ball's nice and sharp, look. I wonder if I give it a bit of clarity, just to bring the player out a bit. A bit of clarity and a bit of dehaze, perhaps. Just to make it, give it a bit of drop off. Again, everything else is pretty spot on. So yeah, just, just a crop on that one, really, and them apertures. Right, nice. thanks for that one, Jonathan. Right, who we've got next? All right, James Diagor. <laughs> You're going to tell me off now. It's James. <laughs> anyway, thanks for sending this in, James. I think you've sent a couple in. Um, only one with this would be you've chopped the legs off, chopped the feet off. I know it's a line out, and line outs happen really quickly. Um, and again, with the backdrop, you've got the floodlight there, but line outs happen so quick, you ain't got time to move. So what's in the background is in the backdrop. Um, but it'd be nice to, to get the whole image in. If you haven't got the whole image in, then I would probably, if there was a story to it, or they won the game off this line out or something like that, I would probably crop it in more. So, you know, come into something like that. Again, give the players space for that ball to move into if they're going to chuck it backwards. Something like that, perhaps. Again, each to their own, everyone's different. But as long as you've got the two players holding the line out lads up, then yeah, something like that. But uh, apart from that, lovely and sharp. Let's just see what you're shooting at. Uh, F5, yeah. Uh, you're at 250th, 1000th. Probably knock that shutter speed up a bit to 1250th or 1600th if you can. Looks like quite a dark day. Floodlights are on, so you, you're trying to get as much light as you can. That was at, at uh, 70 mil. So yeah, perhaps bring your aperture down a bit just to get, get you a bit of a better drop off and you might have lost a bit of that floodlight as well. But um, yeah, pretty spot on that really, mate. Not a lot to, can be done with that one. So that's that one, James. And what's the other one? Oh yeah, this one. Yeah, again, we've got the old player's backs sort of scenario. Um, unless there was a massive story to go with this image, probably wouldn't use it, James. Um, even though you've got good expression on this player's face, I don't think he's going to tackle him. I think this player looks like he's, he's going to score a try. Um, but chopped his foot off and chopped the hand off here a bit. I'm not sure if you've cropped this or whether this is full frame. I'm guessing it's full frame. So, yeah, probably would have left this one on the computer, James, I'm guessing. But again, let me know the scenario to this one. Um, but uh, let's just double check the settings, see what you're at. Looks like you've got a good drop off, F5, yeah, 400th, 640th. I don't know if he's going for a bit of a pan, a bit of a pan blur, but you can just see boot's a bit soft. There's a bit of movement in the boot and the hand, and this hand here. Um, so perhaps just 
up your, your shutter speed a bit to 1250th again or 1600th if you can. You've got a good ISO there so you probably did have room to go a bit faster. But anyway, let's go off that one. So thanks for them James. And then David Giles, I think, yeah, we'll finish on David's images. So this is pretty spot on to be fair. Um, obviously he's getting tackled by this player. So this player is more prominent than this player perhaps. So I might have cropped in a bit, sort of cropped into somewhere like that. So that it's still balanced, the image is still balanced, you've still got a tackle. Don't really need this player in, I don't think. Um, yeah, it's pretty spot on apart from that. Uh, again, Mike, let's have a look what you're at. 5.6, 2,000th, yep. Yeah. ISO 125th, yep, yeah, uh, 125. Yeah, pretty spot on, really. And you're at 321 mils, so that's probably why it's gone. the aperture's gone to 5.6. But you've got a nice bit of drop off there. Look, you can hardly see these bricks. Um, I'm not sure what really it doesn't need much else really bit of color perhaps bit of saturation i'm not sure just make it pop a bit bit of clarity perhaps just to make it really stand out a bit a bit stronger that's probably about it really i wouldn't really do much else just a bit of a crop on that one so yeah spot on that one what else we got david i know you sent quite a few in ah oh, this one obviously looks like you're shooting into the sun so Again, exposure. Now we can get round, we can obviously get round this. We can take the shadows out to bring the players out a bit, but that will obviously highlight the rest. But um, what you at? F5, 400th, 2000th, 120, yeah, 124 mil. Good settings again, spot on settings, them really. Uh, look, the ball's absolutely pin sharp. Everything is pin sharp because you're at a 2000th, so that's perfect. So it's just the exposure that's probably a bit down. It doesn't matter if you burn the background out, it's just getting them players sharp. So let's go for a bit of clarity as well. I do love the old clarity tool. It really does make things pop a bit and a bit of dehaze perhaps. Not too much because you'll darken the image off again. Bit of saturation perhaps. Yeah, that's about all really. It's a nice crop. I haven't cropped it. This is how, it, how you sent it in, into David? So yeah, pretty spot on that. Just your exposure really. But yeah, good settings on that one. So that's good. And then same sort of thing again, I quite like this because this ball's obviously travelled pretty quick because there's something going on here, which is great. You've left that in the frame, so that's good. Nice crop again, so it's, I haven't cropped it at all. Just a similar scenario again, really, just the shadows and just it's just probably a little bit underexposed. So just bring that up, bring a bit of contrast in. Let's add a bit of clarity again to make it pop a bit, bit of saturation. It doesn't matter that the background's dropped, uh, that's burnt out a bit, really. The grass is burnt out because your subject's nicely lit, you know. So just a bit underexposed, perhaps, on that one. That's all, David. Again, settings, F5, 2,400. Yeah, spot on, that. So, yeah, the ball's nice and sharp. Grass is nice and sharp. So, yeah, not too bad, that. Good crop. Just underexposed a bit, that's all, mate. Horizons are good. Look, these windows are nice and nice and square. So, yeah, jobs are good, then. Well... We'll call it a day at that because <laughs> my eyes are going square. But uh, anyway, thanks ever so much for sending them in, guys. Do comment below. Let me know if you think, hey, I won't crop that like that or I won't give that the saturation you gave it. Really interesting to compare all our different methods. I hope you learned something from that. I mean, every day is a learning day in photography and editing. Do let me know if you do anything different, like I said. And uh, yeah, if you've got any images from the weekend that you've not let, yet looked through, send them in. One, one thing I will ask, um, if you're sending an image in, pop your name on the top, you know, um, call the image with your name and then it just saves me having to sort through them all and putting them into relevant folders. So yeah, and then I can load them up a lot quicker and uh, get through a few more videos hopefully. So that's video number one done. We'll have another critique session in a few days time perhaps and I'll get another one, get another one created. But anyway, thanks ever so much guys. Have a great week. Catch up soon. All the best. <laughs>